So we talked about MIC, which we MIC and MBC, right? Everybody is clear with MIC and MBC. Fair enough, right? So we'll move on, and we have seen three different things. We have been talking about three different things. One was antibiotic resistance, and I said whenever we talk about antibiotic resistance, essentially we are trying to say that there is increase in the MIC value. The MIC value significantly should increase. Number one. Number two, it is an in it is an heritable property. That means it passes from one generation to another generation, right? These are the two things that primarily we talked about whenever we talked about resistance. Then we talked about something which is known, probably new to you, which we talked about antibiotic tolerance. Tolerance essentially meaning that the MIC value there is no change. But whenever we are determining the MIC, we generally do not determine or do not generally do not see the kill kinetics, killing curve. But if at all we see the killing curve, what will happen in case of tolerant population is that there is going to be significant increase in MDK 99. MDK means minimum duration to kill 99 percent bacteria. So minimum duration to kill 99 percent bacteria is going to significantly increase and that is what is prevalent over. This is the susceptible population and you see this is the MDK 99 value over here and this is the tolerant population. It is also dying. It is also going to die. If at all you incubate this for 16 hours, you will not see any difference in the MIC value and actually the MIC value is reflected over there. You see these wells did not grow. These wells did not grow. So the MIC is same. But over here, the minimum duration to kill 99, MIMDK 99 is significantly higher compared to the susceptible population. So that is a tolerant population. So antibiotic tolerance or antibiotic tolerant population and we said that this antibiotic tolerant population is heritable also just like that's like resistance right and then we introduced a new term which is called antibiotic persistence now persistence we said is similar to tolerance that means again there is no change in the mic but there is also no change in the mdk 99 so minimum duration to kill 99 percent of the bacteria in a population is also exactly same as that of the susceptible population but only 9 mdk 99.99 is different or higher mdk 99.99 so you can actually imagine what is the minimal small percentage that is governing this particular phenotype or this particular population so this is not heritable so it is driven by we said stochastic gene expression it is driven by heterogeneous gene expressions and that is why the killing curve the green one is again the susceptible population the gray one is of the antibiotic persistence it also exactly follows that of the susceptible population up until certain time and only after certain time there is a certain population very minimal number of bacteria that is remaining over there that extends the minimum duration to kill higher compared to the susceptible population that is MDK 99.99 becomes higher. So for this the difference between the tolerance and this is that even MDK 99 is going to be similar but MDK 99.99 is going to be different. And I said that this is primarily driven by, primarily governed by heterogeneous gene expression. How heterogeneous gene expression comes into the picture? We are going to talk in length today. How it is actually coming. And over here by heterogeneous gene expression, I mean to say there are some genes which are responsible for growth of the bacteria. And these particular genes are having some sort of some noise over there because of which the growth rate is becoming slower. And just because of the growth rate becoming slower, you can essentially this particular population, subpopulation of the bacteria can actually withstand that antibiotic for a longer period of time. And that is what is persistence. If you isolate, so over here, presumably you would be able to isolate persister cells, right? Because these are the cells which are persisting even at longer duration of the antibiotic 
similar level of antibody. There is no change in the concentration of the antibody. So, if you isolate the persister cells from this particular population and again inoculate, it is going to go back to this particular level because the generation of this particular phenotype is not ingrained in the genotype, it is driven by noise or phenotypic heterogeneity. Are you there with me? I wanted to convey this particular point. This is not coming because of the mutation. If at all it would have come because of mutation, then it would be heritable from one generation to the next generation. This is not heritable property. This is coming from the noise in the gene expression. Sir, what is noise? We will come what is noise and how noise is governed. Our idea about transcription and translation in a bacterial population is very flawed. This means essentially, when I say flawed is basically because of this, that if at all you have a tube and there are let us say 10,000 E. coli cells. We tend to believe that all the 10,000 E. coli cells are going to behave in exactly the same manner as any of the other. In terms of transcription, in terms of translation, for any kind of any gene, that is not correct. They are very different. Even to the simplistic nature of lacoperon genes are going to be very variable over here. In fact, if at all you put reporter genes under each lacoperon genes, you will see there is difference in terms of the fluorescence genes are coming up across the different population. It is given by the fact not all the E. coli cells over here in among the 10,000 E. coli cells are expressing exactly the same number of lac Y permease or lac Z the beta galactosidase. Not. It is our notion that we tend to believe that they are same, but they are not. And it is coming because of the fact that the gene expression goes like this. It is noise. Some of the cells at some point of time will express sudden burst in expression some of the cells will not and all that. So, that is population and this is community behavior which we are going to try to tackle probably at the fag end of this particular course. So, essentially coming back over here is this in contrast to resistance and tolerance which are attributes of an entire bacterial population and that is why it could be heritable from one generation to the next generation. Tolerance is not, tolerance is a property or the ability of a subpopulation. So, only 0.01% of the entire population is actually, sorry, persistence is actually, 0.01% can show persistence like behavior. Not all bacteria would show. The resulting kill time kill curve is therefore biphasic. This is the biphasic because majority of the population would show the characteristics similar or akin to that of the susceptible population and exactly it will follow that of the green line. But under a certain, after a certain time suddenly because of an extremely minute population it will bifurcate and it will show a biphasic curve. This is the biphasic curve, one the grey curve, the biphasic curve, the green curve is a single curve, right. So that is how. Now you see this is what I was talking about that if at all you take, this is the starting population, this is one. This Roman 1 and the growth curve 1 over here is similar. So, this is the pathogen density let us say. This is the time and we are introducing drug at this particular window, right. So, 1 if at all we introduce the drug, drug what will happen? It will go down, 2 it will slowly go down the number of population and at 3 it is going to be minimal that is why survival of the persisters, survival of the persisters and if at all you do not have any drug, this is the white window over here, you do not have any drug, again the bacteria will grow up over there. This is the bacteria has grow up over there, 4. But this particular population is not going to be reflective of this population only. It is going to establish again go back and establish its original population where this persister is going to be a very minor percentage of that initial population. Are you there with me? Because it is going to re-establish that noise in the G expression of those genes which were important for lowering its growth, which were important for lowering its growth. This is all this is happening because of the fact it is which it is some of the population is not growing as efficiently as the rest of the population. That is the re reason we have taken in the growth class not the difference equation, we have taken differential equation to represent our growth curve, right? Nt equals to N0 e to the power mu t rather than nt equals to n0 2 to the power g. We did not do that. We took the differential equation into account, right? So, then we started talking about this particular experiment. So, this is this is the entire thing together. You start with a population. This is a bacterial population. Let us say if you put antibiotic and start measuring the number of bacterial colonies, the black 
the black line represents that of the susceptible population. The blue line represents the population which is resistance because none of them gets killed even with extended period of exposure to that particular antibiotic concentration and that's why you see all the bacteria is green over here. But there are certain bacteria which are red. These are the persister population which is a very minor number and that's why only MDK 99.99 .99 will change and not MDK 99. So if at all you introduce what will happen that over here you will see this yellow line which is a biphasic character that's the persister population. And if at all it's a tolerant population then the MIC won't change the bacteria is not going to that could be surviving all of them are going to die but it is going to take much more longer time to make those bacteria dead. Are you there with me? Fair enough? So we are discussing this particular experiment where what this individual has done she has taken a Salmonella typhimurium culture. Salmonella typhimurium as well as you know just like E. coli it is an enteric pathogen called typhoid fever and all that thing right. So what she has done she has taken an in vitro grown Salmonella typhimurium culture and exposed it to an antibiotic which is clinically relevant cephotaxin which is clinically relevant antibiotic generally you use for Salmonella infection you use cephotaxin. If at all you go to our hospital and if at all you are suffering from high fever along with you know uh, stomach upsets and all that thing that essentially they will give you cephotaxin because presumably you are suffering from salmonella enterica infections and all that. So cephotaxin if at all you put this is the window of the antibiotic here the way antibiotic has been put if you see then it follows this yellow curve that essentially means it is a biphasic character essentially meaning there is persistence bacteria over there right. Then what she did is that we are trying to understand and she is trying to understand that how this persister population comes into the picture. How? How suddenly a bacteria decide that there should be persister population over there. So what she decided is that let us allow this Salmonella enterica to be engulfed or phagocytosed by some macrophages. Right? Macrophage phagocytoses bacteria. If at all you culture macrophages, put some Salmonella over there, then macrophage will phagocytose. Right? Now understandably those particular salmonella species or salmonella bacteria among the population will be quickly killed by the macrophages if at all they are growing inside the cell in a rapid manner. They will be taken care much much quicker compared to the salmonella which is just residing and not doing anything. Right? If somebody creates a ruckus over here I will take that particular individual out of this classroom. If somebody is not even listening but not even just like you know, idly sitting over here on one corner I won't bother. So exactly same thing happens with salmonella or macrophages if the bacteria is growing some of the bacteria which are more rapidly growing salmonella what they would do the salmonella the macrophages would take out those particular salmonella out of the picture. Those particular salmonella population which is very slow growing not causing anything they will macrophage will say okay I can take care of it probably a little later but let me first take care of the that particular bugs which are creating a lot of problem right. So they will stay for a certain period of time essentially what is helping them is their growth rate is low that is why they are able to survive longer. So what she did is that she pushed she put some salmonella on the macrophage culture the macrophages engulfed or phagocytose those salmonella and then killed the rapidly growing salmonella only those salmonella survived which were slow growing. So she isolated from the inside the macrophages after some time those particular salmonella and what did she do? Essentially she enriched the slow growing salmonella population. This is what she enriched the slow growing salmonella population and then she did do she took the slow growing salmonella population and put it into a test tube in a, a liquid culture broth. What will happen? Liquid culture the population will go back to its original level because it is coming from not coming from the mutation it is coming from just stochastic or noise in gene expression right. So what she watch what she finds out is this is this green line over here she still gets she still gets a biphasic curve essentially meaning that still there is persistence but the persistence character has been enriched a little bit that is why the biphasic character has moved up a little bit are you there with me are you there with me now from this blue grips on this yellow line the green line has moved up a little bit right. So the persistent cells have become more in population that is why the curve has moved a little bit but essentially it is still a biphasic character that essentially meaning it is still a persistent behavior. 
Now what she did is that she again put the salmonella on the macrophage culture. Again the salmonella similarly engulfed entire mac all the salmonella macrophage engulfed all the phagocytosis all, all the salmonella killed the rapidly growing salmonella left the slow growing salmonella. But unlike last time when she took out the salmonella from inside the cell of the macrophages and then cultured it in a test tube instead of doing that she took out the salmonella from inside the cell and put the antibiotic on top of this. You understood the difference what did she do? So I said there are two things she did look at this blue line and the green line forget about the blue, yellow line right now. For the blue green line what she was doing she was having a salmonella culture so a macrophage culture she infected with salmonella culture over there macrophage phagocytose the salmonella right. So macrophages killed the fast growing salmonella species left the slow growing salmonella species. So after some time what she did for the yellow line I sorry sorry for the blue, green line she isolated the intracellular salmonella from inside the macrophages which were slowly growing but then she cultured those salmonella in a test tube in a liquid medium in the cultured medium let us say nutrient broth or let us say LB and all that and then she put the antibiotic over there right. And in case of the blue she did not grow this after taking it out from inside salmon uh, inside macrophages she did not grow it in a test tube. So she did not allow she did not allow what? population to go back to its original level because of stochastic gene expression and then see what happened. It looked more like a tolerant population compared to a persistent population. The curve up until not very late is showed there is a higher MDK99 value and it is differentiated from that of the that of the persistent behavior right. This was the this was the tolerant curve. It looked more like a tolerance over here up until the very fag end when it bifurcates, when it bifurcates. So essentially meaning what? That if at all you are putting stress on the bacteria, this phagocytos, phagocytosis by macrophages is putting a lot of stress on salmonella. So stress on the bacteria can push it towards more persister behavior, possibly eventually giving rise to tolerance behavior. See, we did not know. I am slowly going to come and prove at the end of this class how persistence can lead to tolerance, tolerance can lead to resistance. So we are slowly, when we started all this we did not know anything. So slowly I am going to prove that, so be with me. So now this thing showed that if at all you put the bacteria a lot of stress, in this particular stress case the stress was phagocytosis, right. Bacteria is facing a lot of stress. It does not know it is getting phagocytosis and all that. It is just facing a lot of stress. Now, other people have done similar experiment but with other stress. It could be a nutrient limitation stress. It could be a dioxic shift that means change on one carbon source to another carbon source. That is a stress. It could be an external pH. It could be DNA damage. All these are essentially a stress to the bacteria. And these stresses can do something to the bacterial population so that the persistent population are enriched, persistence behavior are promoted or bacteria are slowly getting pushed towards from persistence to tolerance behavior. Are you there with me on this particular thing right? Questions? Go ahead. No, persistence are inheritable. No, huh. no, no, huh. Right, right. Because they did not grow up until that where the complete persistence became the entire 100 percent total fir se establish ho gaya. Thora bahut grow karke then they have put the antibiotic over here. So they have enriched right this is the more number of persistence the red cells are persistent. So at the end of this phagocytosis you are able to isolate more number of pers persistent cells. Now you grow it slightly in a test tube you do not allow the complete establishment of stochastic or noise over there and then you put it antibiotic you are going to see a shift if at all you would have incubated for a couple of more hours over there you would see exactly the following line of the blue of the yellow line. I am sure she would have done that experiment I am sure she would have failed and then she would have come up with this. This is not the result of one experiment. For your information if at all anyone wants to do this kind of work she is in she, her name is uh, Sophie Helene she is in Harvard Med School very young lady does excellent science, excellent science, okay, okay. So now 
यस हाँ द इंट्रा माइक्रोफेजेस वी आई डिड नॉट ग्रो इट अप सो वॉट एवर सेल्स आई हैव आइसोलेटेड दे आर स्लो ग्रोइंग I did not put it into a media outside after I isolated it from macrophages. So whatever cells are there, they are slow growing. I did not allow re-establishment of the noise in that population. The gene expression of those particular genes which were responsible for lowering the growth remained low in expression. Right? Right? They are not growing inside the macrophages. Whatever inside the macrophages, the faster growing cells have been taken care of which is slow growing or not growing i have isolated them the i slow growing or non growing cells can only be the tolerant population right okay that's the blue line okay questions where shot sir in the blue line the bifurcation is much sharper compared to other species. that's that's a cartoon that's a cartoon don't go this is not a data that's a cartoon but the point is the the bifurcation only happens at a very very late stage if at all i would have stopped my experiment over here you would be saying if at all i would this is a tolerant population that's a very very late phase this is a cartoon don't go by that the original data is somewhere else now the question is how it is happening that's the question remember the last the last genetic engineering class ccdb right ccdb suicide toxin anti toxin modules in bacteria a hot topic of research this toxin is not the toxin produced by the bacteria for the host this toxin is produced by the bacteria for itself so it's toxic to itself it kills itself understandably if at all it has a toxin then it cannot grow it cannot grow right it's toxic for its own growth so essentially meaning what it needs to have an anti toxin molecule ccdb CCDA, so they were creating a mutation in the CCDA gene. They are null, taking out, right? That CCDA was anti-toxin. CCDB was the toxin because it was poison for DNA gyrase. DNA gyrase, it was poison. Similarly, we will see lot of them over there. So what happens is that the toxin and the anti-toxin molecule are present in an operon, and we will see that in the next slide. toxin and the anti toxin molecules are present in an operon and they get transcribed now sometimes because of this the toxin anti toxin molecule encode as the toxin anti toxin modules encode a stable toxin that may inhibit one of the diverse set of metabolic processes and an anti toxin neutralizes the activity of the toxin when the cell is not under stress so whenever there is a stress somehow the toxin molecules goes up somehow why how can that be sir because the anti toxin molecule gets degraded we will see that couple of slide the anti toxin there are mechanisms because of which under stress it could be dna stress it could be antibiotic stress it could be phagocytosis it could be lower ph or higher ph it could be nutrient dioxic shift nutrient shift all that is a stress because of which the anti toxin may get degraded or anti toxin may become may, may become destabilized so that suddenly the proportion of the toxin does not happen to the entire population only a certain population why because this is cannot be that all the cells always maintain exactly one is to one ratio of the toxin anti toxin it is not possible in some cells maybe the toxin become 3 is to 1 in some cells only very few cells that is where the persistence 0.01% 0.01% when stressed the cells degrade the anti toxin enabling the toxin to inhibit the activity of the gene and those particular genes are what they are essential for metabolism and that's why the growth is slowed down because the toxin dna gyrase poison so that means dna replication is not happening dna replication is not happening means cause cells division is not happening essentially not meaning cells are dying cells are metabolically becoming inactive so i'm not dying but i'm not dividing also if at all i'm not dividing essentially the antibiotics are not going to work so i am not growing so the antibiotic i can increase the toxin level just by increasing the toxic level how i have not included some mutations over there just by some unfortunate error maybe the toxin molecules numbers have increases from so that the stoichiometry of 1 is to 1 toxin anti toxin is become 2 is to 1 are you there with me all people fair enough fair enough so now within a clonal population of cells clonal means 
isogenically they are similar they are isogenic clonal means same genotype dna sequence is hubo who same exact same there is no mutation at all clonal population of cells toxin antitoxin molecules have a bistable state of expression that means some of the cells produce higher amount some of the cells produce lower amount that's called bistability right and you can get to know about a gene's bistable nature of character under unless and until you take single cell analysis because whenever you are doing you are isolating e coli rna from an entire e coli population of 10 to the power 6 that contains persister that contains slow grower that contains fast grower everything doesn't make sense if at all you take individual e coli cells you are going to see that they are exactly very different just like our body's different cells eye cells versus liver cells versus lung cells versus heart cells they don't express similar sort of genes exactly like that so it has stemness like property it can divert and that is typically known in present day microbiology is called bet hedging bet hedging bet hedging means it is putting its bet on a small amount of the populations and so that a small small population subsets are ready to face any adverse situation isogenically all of them are similar genetically genotypically they are all similar they are keeping the population ready for different different situations so that come a situation at least one of those population may have a chance to survive rather than the entire population becoming extinct this is typically known as bet hedging they are so smart they are exceptionally smart we don't think so whatever this is toxin antitoxin module elongation factor tu how many people know right elongation factor tu does what elongation factor tu brings the trna over there on the amino acyl site of the ribosome so there is a protein which does what it phosphorylates elongation factor tu see phosphorylation of elongation factor tu by doc again don't remember i don't remember any of this understand the concept which is more important i will show you how many how many toxin antitoxin system e coli has in the next slide and you will be astonished that's why it can so this is phosphorylated by this particular protein called dog the moment eftu gets phosphorylated it cannot attach to this particular trna that essentially meaning what it is cannot bring the trna to the ribosomal a, ribosome a side that is in translation slows down the translation slows down means metabolism slows down because ultimately the proteins are the effector molecule there is a possibility that the trnas may get acetylated the acetylation of amino acyl trna by this particular protein called tac t this tac t the moment it acetylates the trnas do not get charged by amino acyl trna synthetase again the same thing the translation slows down right you can also see that the mrna can get degraded such as the protein by rel e or the trna may get also cleaved by a protease called vap c these are different different proteins which are essentially doing what essentially lowering down the translation rate so whatever is happening is happening post transcriptionally whatever is happening is happening post transcriptionally why you will not see a single example happening at the transcription level because once there is transcription there are more chances to have heterogeneity kyunki kuch suppose kar lo there is a group of e coli cell 50 e coli cell or in all cases at the transcription level only agar there is a possibility that the transcription is controlled all the e coli cells are producing only five copies of e coli that five copies of a particular mrna even if you create some proteas and all that thing it is going to be very difficult to control it the noise at that level right compared to that if you leave the transcription let's say all the e coli cell produces 100 copies of that particular transcript and in some of the cases out of 100 20 are gone some cases 5 are gone some cases 50 are gone you see the difference that's why if you exert control from the bacterial perspective whenever they are trying to control and fine tune something ab absolutely fine tune they do it at the transcriptional level if they want to keep it fluid it essentially means chalta hai thoda bahut they will do it at the translational level beauty of life there's a evolution happened that fashion the control becomes much more better if you do it at the transcriptional level 
the control becomes much more loose you allow fluidity in the system you allow lesser control on the system provided you allow the system to go past transcription and you try to control it at the translation level are you there with me fair enough now you see this is the number of toxin antitoxin modules the e coli has can you imagine i am not even naming them i am not even showing that this is the number of toxin antitoxin molecules e coli has at e coli k12 simple e coli k12 has this many numbers so you can imagine the number of subpopulation can arise due to fluctuations in the expression of this toxin antitoxin module out of these so many right in some of the populations all the things are working in some of the population only one toxin antitoxin module is working in some of the population maybe three is working in some of the population maybe 10 is working so many varieties are happening so that e coli is keeping populations ready for facing any particular situation bet hedging and the way the toxin antitoxin molecule works is this in this particular case the toxin is over here the antitoxin is over there their expression are not controlled by a single promoter but the rna of the rna of the antitoxin can bind to the rna this is same like you know that's why silencing rna kind of thing and that's why the toxin molecule is suppressed but look at this this is how generally it is generally this is how it is the organization is like this this is a promoter a single promoter the antitoxin and the toxin are in operonic fashion this is the antitoxin gene followed by the toxin gene and the toxin is produced this is transcriptional fusion or a translational fusion this is transcriptional fusion this is producing in the single mrna followed by producing two different proteins this is the antitoxin this is the toxin if the toxin is left alone it can cleave the target protein if there is a toxin antitoxin adduct are formed then it becomes inactive the antitoxin cannot work and the antitoxin if at all it's produced somewhere more it can sit back on its promoter it can sit back on its promoter and repress its expression ke bhaiya aur zyada zarurat nahi hai aur produce karke kya fayda hai you are getting my point let's say some some cases rna polymerase starts from here RNA polymerase starts from here and RNA polymerase expresses it, right? And after some point, who said that each and every time the RNA polymerase is going to bind over here in the promoter region, every time it has to complete up until the transcription termination, which is over here, let's say, is it absolutely necessary? There cannot be any chance that the RNA polymerase can stop over here. Have you heard about abortive transcription? This is abortive transcription. abortive transcription if at all there is abortive transcription what happens antitoxin molecule gets produced toxin molecule does not get produced so there is more antitoxin the bacterial growth rate becomes higher the moment the antitoxin is more toxin to antitoxin ratio is low antitoxin is going to go and bind and repress like a cell ko bolenge ki cell aur zarurat nahi hai antitoxin ki abhi bahut zyada hai toxin hai hi nahi there is no point in expressing lower it down shut it down right so these are the different ways and these are the different means that can happen right okay so how if at all we regrow the persisters how that is happening how that can go back to that original level it is generally controlled by two factors internal factor and external factors i am talking about if at all we grow persister how that original population the noise is going to get re established this is typically controlled by internal factors in the name which is called conditional cooperativity what is conditional cooperativity include repression of toxic antitoxin module that is through conditional cooperativity which enables the repression of toxic antitoxin operon when toxin antitoxin ratios are low toxin antitoxin ratios are low means antitoxin more toxin less i just showed you an example about if transcription abortive transcription you see abortive transcription moreover antitoxin gene is typically found upstream of the toxin gene it is possible that abortive transcription may also be involved in determination of toxin antitoxin ratios are you there conditional cooperativity by which the cells this is mathematical modeling people do not know as of now they are trying to figure out abortive transcription is definitely a phenotype but how the cell can actually measure how many toxin molecule versus how many antitoxin molecule they are trying to mathematically model it just like we model the growth just model like we model the evolution like that 
so over here is the stress is reduced macrophage was phagocytosing that was a stress are you there with me fair enough so when the stress is reduced i took out the salmonella from inside the macrophages i was growing in the tube stress is relieved stress is relieved what will happen antitoxin degradation stops you see here antitoxin may get degraded you know which protease degrades the antitoxin the lawn protease which we degrade which we mutated or deleted to create bl21 cells the lawn and the ompt protease that's one of the major proteases which degrades the antitoxin molecule so when the stress is released the degradation of the antitoxin stops the moment it stops what will happen toxin antitoxin ratio may return to a level that enable repression of the operon either by abortive transcription or either by stoppage of the degradation of the antitoxin in both way antitoxin levels are becoming higher the moment antitoxin levels are becoming higher what is happening antitoxin is coming and sitting on the promoter and repressing its own transcription so that there are no more antitoxin molecule then there are no more antitoxin molecules are going what and toxin antitoxin ratios are becoming closer to one is to one the moment no toxin no no free toxin no free antitoxin that essentially meaning cells can grow there is no growth retardation there is no growth inhibition are you there with me on this okay so i'll take one more and then i will take questions so moreover i just said about ab abortive transcription and then there are external factors such as glucose such as you know reduction in the environmental stress and all that thing if at all you do that results in antitoxin degradation that's what i said and then what will happen if we de-stress out the cell? If we do not stress out the cell, what will happen? Because the persister state is linked to the stress response, right? The persister population was increasing whenever we are putting the cells in the stress. That stress could be pH stress, nutrient stress, that stress could be phagocytosis, that stress could be anything, antibiotic stress also. Anything in the form of a stress. If we since the persister state is strongly linked to the stress response, regrowing persister may be primed for mutation. That is typically known as these persister cells are called reservoirs for prone to be mutated. Why? Regrowing persister cells expresses higher levels of proteins that are involved in the DNA repair, particularly SOS response. SOS response protein, particularly error prone DNA polymerases that are associated with SOS response, right? Quickly repair karna parta hai. Quickly repair karna parta hai, to kya hota hai? Galtiya hoti hai, right? SOS response, error prone polymerases. Galtiya matlab what? Mutation. Galtiya matlab what? Mutations. I am slowly making you from persistence to tolerance. Mutation ho gaya, it will become heritable. When the moment it will become heritable, it will become tolerant population. It can, with, it can withstand. Okay? Expression of error plane polymerases could increase the rate of mutation during replication, thus theoretically increasing the probability of emergence of antibiotic tolerance or resistance. I have not even talked about resistance. Let's talk about just persistence to tolerance. Okay, during persistent infections, the SOS response which has been known to induce formation of persister is also known to upregulate mechanisms for horizontal gene transfer, you know that. Okay, so now I am going to discuss a very nice experiment, just like that macrophage experiment, another experiment. So, so people said, generally we talked about that wherever there is mutation, mutation is random, kahin pe bhi ho sakta hai. right, mutation is random, it can happen any place of the genome. They said, because of this persister, it could be that the mutations are anywhere, but there are more spots which are hot spots. Hot spots of mutations are there and they are preferably on those genes which control the growth rate of the bacteria. That means they are involved in the essential biochemical functions or metabolism. So we need to find them. How can we do that? That's the idea. So the hypothesis, this is what is going to call a tolerome tolerome right so what did they did the hypothesis is that persistence is an evolutionary adaptation adaptation mutation nahi hai. adaptation evolutionary adaptation with a discrete set of genetic determinants some genes 
are involved in making a population persistence. Not all genes are responsible. There might be among the 5000 genes, if E. coli has 5000 genes, disclaimer, all the genes are not responsible for slowing down the growth. Only few genes are responsible. What are those genes? Let us find out that, right? This is the way the people have found out the toxin antitoxin modules. The way I just said, it's so easy for me to describe that. It took years worth of work, right? So what did they do? I'm sure people have known over here what is called transposon. How many people know about transposon? All people know about transposon? Huh? Everybody knows about transposon. Who does not know about transposon? Raise your hand. Everybody knows about transposon. Transposon is called jumping genes. It jumps from one gene to another gene and the gene it jumps into, it becomes insertionally inactivated. That means the gene is not functional. We have studied that the gene is always non-functional. Could it be that the gene is lowly functional? Possible hai kya? Ya nahi, possibility nahi hai. Hamesha non-functional hi hoga. How many people believe whatever I just said? The second proposition that if at all the transposon is inserted, then the gene function will be reduced rather than loss of function. How many people agrees with me? See, ek matre, ek do tin. Baaki logo na sir, gappe mat maro. Gappe mat maro. Doesn't it depends on the fact where the transposon is inserted? If at all a gene is, if at all a gene is, let's say, this is uh, again my favorite number 3KB, right? This is a gene. If the transposon is inserted over here, then the gene gets deactivated. This is the C N terminal, this is the C terminal, right? If the gene gets incorporated over here, the gene gets insertionally inactivated. What if the gene transposon gets inserted over here? Does it, will it deleteriously affect the gene function? I don't think so. I don't think so. There is a possibility that, ab transposon yehi pa jayega, iska to koi guarantee nahi hai. Kahin pe bhi ja sakta hai, right? Right? So whenever we studied transposon jumping genes, it will always insertionally inactivate. Are nahi. Dusra bhi ho sakta hai, there is a possibility. Thora dimaag ka khir ki kholna hai. Thik hai na? So what they did is that, they made a transposon library of E. coli. What did they do? They take a transposon, transformed into E. coli and plated. This particular transposon may be having some antibiotic resistance marker. So they plated and they isolated colonies. Now each of those colonies possibly represent that out of the 5000 gene, in each of the colonies a different different gene is where the transposon has got inserted. Are you there with me on this? No? Again, just like the last class, this is randomness. There could be a possibility that 10 E. coli cells having the transposon in the same gene. There is a possibility, yes or no? Is there is a possibility? But I can't put the transposon single ek ke baad ek gene mein dalta nahi Then it will take me thousands of years just to create a library. Experiment kam karunga. Bhuta ke karega kya? Right? So it is not possible. So what has to be done is that I have just put the transposon and E. coli. The transposon has randomly got inserted into multiple different places and each of the colony that I isolate because I get the antibiotic resistance on the plate, I am growing it on the antibody. I think that the transposon has been inserted in different different genes. It could have been inserted out of the 5000 or 10,000 colonies. In 1000 colonies, the transposon have been integrated into the same gene. Not necessarily all the 1000 genes is on the same gene. That essentially means maybe 100 in the gene X, another 300 in gene Y, another 50 in gene Z like that. Are you there with me? This is the randomness, right? So this is my transposon library I have in my hand. So what did I do? I took the transposon library of the E. coli and then plate it on an LB ampicillin plate. Okay? Ampicillin plate. Okay? Up now my transposon had this ampicillin resistance marker. My transposon had this ampicillin resistance marker, right? And incubated at 37 degrees centigrade. Because persisters are commonly observed in biofilm. Why biofilm? Biofilm and nutrient availability come in. Biofilm, there is less amount of nutrient availability. So what happens is that the bacteria growth automatically slows down because there is never not abundance of nutrient. Nutrient shortage. Hai. Shortage hai, khana kami hai, kya? Jaldi jaldi grow karna hai, kya? Dhire dhire grow karna hai. So I will slow down my growth. So essentially, persister cells population is higher in biofilms. As well as stress, whenever you are not growing E. coli cells, instead of a liquid media in a solid media, that means agar, the E. coli cells feel stress. That means persister population is enriched. So, just to mimic that biofilm kidar grow hota hai? Solid surface ke upar, right? So, just to mimic that, 
just to push the population towards the per per persister population, they have grown the E. coli cells on agar plate, which is adherent plate, which is close to biofilm, where the E. coli cell would attach on a biofilm on a solid surface and then grow. Right? Are you with me? So then they isolated E. coli cells from that agar plate, again exposed to antibiotic, and that's how they did it three rounds of enrichment. And then individual isolate ko un logo ne isolate kiya and they have isolated approximately 100 colonies from this after three rounds and NGS analysis of those 100 isolates. Next generation sequencing, whole genome sequencing by next generation sequencing kiya. Unko mutation mile predominantly on three genes, predominantly on three genes few genes where transposons were inserted were predominantly were identified by this ye kuch bhi yaad rakhne ki zarurat nahi ek bhi nahi aayega question aisa keval gap suno you understand the story and understand the the beauty the, the, that's how the science is these three genes is where they have seen predominantly the transposon got inserted one was med g one was tkta and one was glpd TKTA and GLPD are predominantly associated with methyl glyoxal biosynthesis. Methyl glyoxal is a toxic byproduct. Toxic byproduct. I am not going to talk about methyl glyoxal. I am not going to talk about these two genes. I am going to restrict our discussion only on METG. Okay? I am going to restrict our discussion on METG. If at all you look for methyl glyoxal, just go back, glycolysis cycle say methyl glyoxal banta hai and methyl glyoxal is a toxic byproduct, cells get killed. Okay, so there is enough thing that I have said about you over here. Theek hai? Now, what is MEDG? MEDG encodes a methionyl tRNA synthetase. What is known? The gene name is MEDG, the protein name is METRS. Are you there with me? Theek hai? Theek hai? Methionyl tRNA synthetase, not FMET methionyl tRNA synthetase, not formal methionine, not the start codon. This is methionyl tRNA synthetase, which is if the methionine is present inside the amino acid of the protein, right? Inside, inside, yaha pe methionine, not this methionine, not the start methionine, not ATG. Are you there? So, this methionyl tRNA synthetase is actually for charging the tRNA with methionine, right? So, ye methionyl tRNA synthetase is an enzyme understandably is, is essential for viability. Agar ye disrupted ho gaya, to fir methionyl, methionyl tRNA synthetase charge nahi hoga, tRNA charge nahi hoga methionyl se. So, methionyl se tRNA charge nahi hoga, jahan pe methionyl aega in the amino acid ke under, then methionyl will not be incorporated. So, that's when essentially what? Cells will be dead. Are you there with me? Are you there with me? Fair enough. Good. So, now covalently link methionine to the amino acid of their cognate tRNA molecules. This is the tRNA charging. This is particular MET, MET RS which is the G product of MET G gene is that particular coding for that particular protein, right? Now MET RS is a large protein. It's a large protein, that same protein. It's a large protein with multiple domains. And the distal C terminal domains involved in dimerization. So the C terminal domain is allowing two MES RA, MET RS protein to come together and form a dimer. C terminal. In this dimeric form, the dimeric form of the protein is enzymatically highly active. The dimer is enzymatically highly active. Not necessarily that the monomer is inactive. Monomer is activity is low, lowly active. If the activity of the dimer is let's say 100, the monomer activity is somewhere around let's say 15 or 10, something like that. So it is not inactive, it is less active. Are you there with me? Are you there with me? So now, MET RS has a reduced binding affinity, monomeric MET RS. If the C terminal portion, if at all you delete it, so it will not form dimer because the dimer C terminal part was essential for dimer formation. So if at all it does not form dimer, so it remains as a monomer and the monomer has reduced binding ability for the tRNA. Agar binding nahi kiya, to it will not charge that particular thing. So its activity is low in the monomeric fashion. In the dimeric fashion, the activity is higher. So when they sequenced those particular things, ye jab sequence kiya, ye jab sequence kiya, what they saw? The sequencing result revealed that the transposon insertion occurred at the 3 prime end of the MEDG gene. 3 prime end means kya? 
C terminal of the protein. That means the C terminal got deactivated. The C terminal got deactivated means what? It cannot form dimer, but it can form monomer. It can form monomer means it did not lose function. It is less active. That means it is active, but at a much lower rate. So methionyl tRNA synthetase absent nahi hai. Hai, kam hai. Yani ki what will happen? The growth will be reduced. The reduced affinity to T mRNA exhibited by MedG mutants may be the key factor for mutants persistence phenotype. So that's why the ampicillin may grow kar raha tha, that was because of the fact that the T transposon got inserted into the C terminal of the MedG gene. What happened because of that insertion is what happened because of the insertion in MET G or MET RS could not form dimer, it formed monomer, its activity is low now, so that its metabolism becomes low, its growth rates become low, and the moment the growth rates become low, what will happen? What will happen? It can now persistence. Now it is a now it's a heritable property because gene under chalagyao. So it has become tolerant now. Now it has become tolerant. Because the gene may now it's a heritable property. Each time you grow, it will remain over there. It becomes a heritable property. Are you getting my point? Right? Earlier it was noise. Kabi hoga, kabi nahi hoga. Pata nahi kitna hoga. Now it has become a heritable property because in any of the E. coli cells in that particular mutant, the transposon mutant, where the transposon has got inserted into the C terminal of MedG gene, what happened? It can transfer that phenotype or genotype heritable property to the next generation. Are you there with me? Fair enough? So from persistence, what was a noise? Sometimes aega, sometimes nahi aega, pata nahi. Bharosa nahi hai. Now it is 100% bharosable. Huh? Right? Adani ke tarah nahi hai. Hmm? Right? So, my final experiment. Anybody has any questions now? And what I am talking about is all from papers, it's not from the books. I am given the reference of the papers down over there. These are all PNAS papers, very recent PNAS papers or Nature Reviews papers. I am going to discuss about another PNAS paper right now. You can go back and look into this if at all you are interested. If at all you are not interested, then listen to me. Go ahead, Sonam. Also, cell, जब जो जस जो essential gene है जहाँ पे transposon insert हो गया वो cell तो ऐसे क्यों वैसे ही मर जाएंगे? तो वो तो detect ही नहीं होगा, वो तो आएंगे नहीं, colony form नहीं होगा, big deal. I did not even care, right? मैं what? See, so now I'll 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 stop you. The stop thing, I will stop you. The reason is the library that you are creating, you can create the library by any means. The reason that you will screen the library is the key thing. What you are screening for, there is a re, there is a proverb saying you get what you screen for. So you are going to get what your screening system is going to give you. The screening system is such that that is going to give me only the population of the E. coli cells where they will be able to tolerate certain amount of the antibiotic. That's it. Okay? Are you getting my point? Are you getting my point? Okay. So what these particular guys have done, what these particular guys have done is that they wanted to know resistance population kidar hai or kya ho raha ho, kya, what is happening. So what they have started, they have started with E. coli cell. Is E. coli cell mein ek gene hai, AMPC. AMPC gene codes for a beta lactamase protein. Right, is E. coli cell mein already a gene hai, but that gene is repressed. Does not express. Hai? So majority of the population is susceptible. All the population is actually E. coli susceptible towards ampicillin. Get my point? Because the AMPC gene is repressed. Are you there with me? Fair enough. So I have started with this and then did what? E. coli cell is treated with ampicillin. Okay. I kept on putting it on ampicillin. Each time majority of the bacteria marjata, I isolate whatever few remains. I grow it up. I again put them on antibiotic. Again majority of the bacteria they go. There are all the majority of the bacteria is dying. Then I again take it up, again antibiotic, again majority of the bacteria down. Asa karte karte mene bohat sara cycle kiya. And finally I landed up on some E. coli cells after multiple generations. Multiple generations which is now resistant to ampicillin. When I say resistant means what? 
when I say resistance means what? MIC value increase ho gaya hai. This equalizes MIC towards ampicillin, so this equalizes, they are all, they are all equali. They are both equali. It is not from Escherichia coli to it has become Escherichia something else, right? right? So Escherichia coli hai hai hai, but MIC value towards ampicillin have significantly increased. So it has, now I can call it a resistant population, right? right? And I have seen also the reason I can also call it resistant that seen as that if at all I grow it up, the re it resistant resistance hi Utna hi MIC value rata hai. Ye change nahi hota MIC uska. Are you there with me? Do, I mean, are you there with me? So what did I do? I took this E. coli cell and I sequenced it again with whole genome sequencing. I did whole genome sequencing of the E. coli cell, and what did I find? I find that there is mutations in the promoter region of the AMPC gene. AMPC, I said that this particular E. coli cell has AMPC but repressed. So I found there is mutation now in the AMPC promoter because of which the repression is relieved. The repression is relieved means AMPC gene is functional. AMPC gene functional means it is coding for a beta lactamase protein, right? And that's essentially that's why it is it is resistant to E. coli. A resistant to ampicillin. Are you there with me? Simple. Aap logo ne to yehi padha hai na abhi tak. Kya beta lactamase gene raha hai to hi ampicillin mein resistant raha hai. Ye to main bakwas kar raha hu abhi tak. Kya kuch kuch hota hai growth upper niche hota rehta hai. Pata nahi kya hota rehta hai. Right? So AMPC gene mein promoter mein there is a mutation and because of which the repression is relieved and because of the repression is relieved the beta lactamase gene is functional. The beta lactamase gene is functional means it can cleave the ampicillin. Ampicillin is a beta lactam antibiotic. That's why it is resistant. Fair enough. Simple. Now, what they did they do is that they also found, so they said, ki, okay, ye to resistance, ho gaya. resistance gene acquire kaise hua? How? Because I did not, there was a MPC, the AMPC gene, but the, it was attenuated. It was not, it was not expressing AMPC gene. It was not to begin with resistant towards E. coli. It has acquired the resistance. Now, I did conjugation to kiya nahi. just lab culture mein manakeable well antibiotic done. That means something must have happened. So let us go back and let us go back. So what they have done during entire process, they have saved cultures. Each places they have saved cultures, right? I am not sure how many of you have, how many of you have read Cam Campbell biology? Have you read Campbell biology? Huh? Huh? Campbell biology? Achha, dekna, wohan pe na, ek banda hai, ka, tazvira uska. He is in University of Mississippi. Uh, nah, Mississippi. University of Michigan State University, uh, I forgot the name of this guy. He has started an experiment in 1988, he is still doing it. He is still doing it. Har din hai. But his picture is there in a textbook that essentially means he is doing something. See, publishing a research paper is one thing. Having your name that along with a picture in a textbook means you have done something very, something which is like superlative, which is Definitely more better, right? So, वो क्या करता है? 1988 से हर दिन सवेरे आता है, E. coli में काम he puts the E. coli in low nutrient media, transfer करके चला जाता है। बस और कुछ नहीं करता, इतना ही simple काम है। He just transfers the E. coli from that in a low nutrient media, इतना ही करता है। अगले दिन आता है, उसमें E. coli में से 10-15 ml अगर grow कर लाए, 5 ml उठा के वो he just puts a what is this called into a uh, glycerol stocks bana leta hai do teen glycerol stocks bana leta hai inoculate karke chala jata hai ghar chala jata hai gana wana gata hai chala jata hai but life is like set <laughs> great what he has done in every day from 1988 he has been still doing this experiment what he is doing is that he is trying to adapt e coli to the low nutrient condition the reason that i said that is that he saves each and every single glycerol stock for each day. So any day, if at all he thinks, मुझे 1997 के 23 June के stock पे जाना है, And wherever he shifts from one university to another, वो खुद जाए ना जाए, वो minus 80 जाना चाहिए. <laughs> so that's his life, basically. In fact, if at all you tell me what is what you are what you are most scared about your lab, minus 80 is electrical connection. If it goes away, then it's over because you will lose all the mutants that we have made for last God knows how many years and all that thing. And remaking those mutants is going to take me another 20 years. Better I retire right now, <laughs> right? So uh, what I am trying to say by saying this, these guys have also done exactly the same thing. When they started the experiment, they said that this is another. This is called serendipity. 
right serendipity means you can foresee things you can see things which normal people can also see but theek hai yaar big deal about it sort of stuff so they saved all the cultures at each and every stage theek hai chahe usme 85 ko license raha hai chahe 5 rahe chahe 500 rahe chahe 5000 rahe right are you with me so they have saved all along these eco license so now since they have understood that okay ab mere jaisa aadmi hota to seedha last ka wala lagta बीच वाला तो खत्म ही हो जाता फिर से चालू करते हैं यार और बीच में फिर से चालू करेंगे तो फिर से नहीं आता फिर सो दे हैव केप्ट इट दैट्स व्हाई दे आर स्मार्ट पीपल एंड आई एम नॉट सो आई हैव दे हैव केप्ट एन एएमपीसी जीन में म्यूटेशन मिला सो दे सेड ओके लेट्स गो बैक एंड सी कब ये म्यूटेशन आया सो दे वेंट बैक टू ऑल दिस एंड दे सेड दैट दे स्टार्टेड लुकिंग एट दैट टू डिटरमाइन व्हेदर द रेजिस्टेंस म्यूटेशन अपीयर ऑन द एंसेस्ट्रल बैकग्राउंड और ऑन द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ अ टॉलरेंट स्ट्रेन we isolated the first resistance clone that established in each population so yahan se this is the place where they started they, it's not that they sequenced only this they sequenced this they sequenced this each color represent there is a transition in the e coli population it started with this color you see after some time there is a blue color e coli cell that came up and all the other e coli cells were getting down the blue color cell started getting propagated mutation hua matlab ye blue color cell mein right so ब्लू कलर सेल में से अवर ब्लू कलर सेल मरने लगा बिकॉज यू नो यू आर रीचिंग द हायर कंसेंट्रेशन ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक एंड ऑल दैट थिंग सो नाउ हायर कंसेंट्रेशन ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक ये ब्लू से बिकम इट बिकम डार्क ब्लू दैट मीन्स कुछ और हुआ शायद मतलब दिस इज अ कार्टूनिश पिक्चर बट दैट्स वॉट दे आर प्रिज्यूमिंग दैट कुड हैपन सो वट दे वेंट बैक दे वेंट बैक टू दिस रीजन एंड देन से नॉट ओनली दे वेंट बैक ओवर हेयर दे वेंट बैक ओवर हेयर ऑल्सो दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉपुलेशन एंड दे डिड ऑल्सो सिक्वेंसिंग ऑफ दिस नाउ ऑल्स अ सिक्वेंसिंग इज डन दे आर ट्राइंग टू रीड द रिजल्ट क्या हुआ in addition to the resistance mutation in this particular cell ampc gene yahan pe to ampc mein promoter mein mutation hai in addition to the resistance mutation in the amp gene each clone over here bears an additional mutation in met gene what was met gene met rs what was met rs doing c terminal domain uska delete ho gaya to it was forming only monomeric monomeric med g the low function the growth rate becomes slower further analysis revealed so now this is med this particular population contain med g as well as mutations in ampc mutations in med g not just fluctuations mutations in med g as well as mutations in the promoter region of ampc ab ye yahan ka population whenever they have sequence this particular population there is no mutation in the ampc there is only mutation in the medgy further analysis revealed medgy mutation has been present prior to the appearance of ampc resistance mutation medgy mutation will never give you resistance mic improve is impossible mic improvement means higher level of mic is only going to happen if at all you have mutations in the ampc gene or expression of the ampc gene med g mutation can give you either two things either it becomes a lethal mutant lethal mutant which is non viable under normal circumstances you do not have to put even antibiotic for that but it can also give you a mutation which is going to lower down the growth and that would result in tolerance so guys the resistance mutation the mutation in the promoter region of the ampc gene which resulted in the higher mic appeared as a second mutational event in addition to the mutation in the med g which appeared first so over here med g mutation came first and then only ampc mutation happened so now if you remember the evolution class we have talked about a 2d plot of the sequence space if at all we plot of the 2d sequence space it looks like this you remember the sequence space this is tolerance this is your wild type mic value is zero it is susceptible to ampicillin the first mutation happened is from hair to hair med g mutation because of that mutation the tolerance number of days percentage of colonies with lag greater than 4 hours increased mic value which is over here increasing in this direction did not change it's exactly at the same position the second mutation happened at the ampc promoter region because of which ampc gene started 
functioning. That's a beta lactamase gene that started cleaving the beta lactam antibiotic. This is a resistant mutation. So from persistence to tolerance to resistance. I'm done. No, it's not. It's a new experiment. It's a completely new experiment. How does the MHG? How does the MHG mutation take place? Mutation, random mutation, Darwin. The E. coli cell is trying to survive. Made G, made G, there is fluctuations in the gene. So after some time, the fluctuation got stabilized. Ki if I express this gene at a low level, I have a better chance. I rather stabilize this particular fluctuation. You are saying, you are saying it's random. I am saying it's adaptive. You are saying it random. It could be random. I am not saying that it is not random. But whatever random mutation has appeared, you will not be able to see that because they are all succumbing to ampicillin. Since I am seeing this only, and you are also seeing this, you are saying it is random. It may have happened in other places. But I am not seeing them because they are all succumbing to ampicillin. I am seeing this only, you are also seeing this. You said, you are saying that this random mutation has occurred over there and that's why you are seeing. I am saying, this is adaptive. It's a debate, ongoing debate, uh, difficult to solve. I am saying it is adaptive, you are saying it's random. I think both of us are correct. You say that there are mutations on other part, they have washed away. I am saying they haven't even taken place. They are taking place only over here. My argument to that is why there are mutational hotspots. Hotspots ki hai? Agar random hi hoga, to sir, hotspots ki hoga? This is in vitro. We have done it in vivo, in animals. That is called within host evolution. We have done that. The results are bizarre. Bizarre. The bizarre means, so I will give you an example. So we work with a bacteria, how much time is there? Five minutes. We work with a bacteria which resides over here, right? Nasopharynx. So approximately 80% of the population, human population across the globe has that. Over here, does not cause disease. Stays over there happily. Everybody has it, no problem. Time to time it decides to do some freakish behavior, some funny things and that's why it goes down to the lower respiratory tract and causes infections, pneumonia, right. So you cough, so over here whenever it is going to go down and causes infection, the only way it can go from one individual to another individual is when you cough and sneeze. COVID-19, similar, aerosol, droplet, same thing, big deal about it, right. So it cough and sneeze and it goes to other person and stays home. What is it doing? It is increasing its number of homes. Aapke paas zyada paisa raha hoga ta kaha karo ke? Either mutual fund ya ghar khari do ge. Ab sab log ghar khari denge. Zyada tar log mere jaisa thore hi hoga ke chalo hai ya uda ke aate hain. Nahi, aisa nahi. Majority of the people will be ghar khari denge. So the bacteria is also doing that. That it is doing, let us get as many homes as possible. So I say, and there are few people along with us, we say that for this particular bacteria, this is pneumonia, I say it does not want to cause disease. It does not want to cause, it's a bad notion that we say that it wants to cause disease. It does not want to cause disease because by causing disease, you are going to suffer. If you suffer, then you are going to take antibiotic, then the bug will die. If you do not take antibiotics, then you will die. Either way, it is bad for the bug. Either way, it is bad for the bug because it loses a home. Why does it want to lose a home? Doesn't matter, right? So what did we do? We did an in vivo evolution experiment. We said that this is at cost to the bacteria. Hey, bahut effort lagana pad raha hai yaar. Pehle inflammation karo, naak maak laal hoga, phir wo aadmi chhinkega, phir wo aerosol form hoga, phir dusre jagah mein jayega. This is a cost to the bacteria. This is actually a fitness cost. What if, if at all, I physically put it from one animal to another animal? So ye kam nahi karna padega. Bacteria ko ye kaam nahi karna padega na, kaam nahi karna padega matlab it does not have to induce inflammation in the host because of which you are going to cough and sneeze. 
so that it will transmit from one individual to another individual. वो काम नहीं करना पड़ेगा because you are doing it for the bacteria. So if at all you do it for the bacteria, so the factor that was responsible for causing this inflammation उसका कोई काम ही नहीं है. So वो धीरे-धीरे धीरे-धीरे गायब होता जाएगा. It should not be there even, right? We did that for 20 cycles on 10 different lineages. 10 different lineage means 20 different lineages in 10 different cycles. Means ek ek lineage matlab one set of animals, right? And we took the animal, the bug over here and put it again back to the another bug. Physically, okay. Tumko kaam nahi karna, mein karke deta hoon. After 10 to 20 cycles, there were these bacteria which has evolved, which does not have that particular factor, which is responsible for this inflammation. Wo hai nahi. Hai nahi matlab hai. Functionally active nahi hai. And now, if at all I take that particular bacteria and the evolved strain and cause infections, amazing thing happens. Amazing thing happens means, so ye yaha pe rahe ke induce nahi kar pa raha. You know, it cannot induce that transmission. So it has to do something else. Otherwise, it is also, I will not be able to help him for its lifetime, right? Otherwise, it will go extinct. So what it will do? It has to do something. So it has done what? It has gone down the lower respiratory tract. Your lungs have tons of these bacteria, tons. But you are happily moving around, helping and all that. 80% mycobacterium tuberculosis patient may not happen. This is what happens. Latent infections. In vivo evolution, they have done it in vitro, you have done it in vivo. So you, you cannot cure, you endure. That's what I said. All right. There are more mesmerizing things are going to come in this course. Abhi bhi aur bache. Ab mere ko last cheez koon batayega? Question nahi hai, philosophical question hai. Question to <laughs> how is it going? Huh? Jab problem aate hai, tab problem karne mein samaj mein aata hai. Problem lagta hai. No, no, no. You should think the way they have been thinking. Then only it will be very easy. Don't think like me. Think like them. Okay, thank you.